It is said to this day he walks the world of men, working miracles. For each act that pleases her, Muriel bestows upon him a white feather from her magnificent robe, which he keeps in a pouch forever by his side. Muriel decreed that when the day came when all the feathers were bestowed, she would call her father home and forgive him. It is said when all the gods are reunited, all will be made right, and the world will transform into a paradise. From the Legends of the First Empire series, we find that the stories and events on Elan largely revolve around Turin's mission to fix the world and gain the forgiveness of his daughter Muriel. So it should be no surprise that Turin plays a large role in the events that shape the world of Royce and Hadrian. Today, we will go over when Turin shows up in both the Rhaeyra Chronicles and Rhaeyra Revelation series. Warning, the following video has spoilers for the books below. If you haven't read them yet, just go do it. They're really good. Let's get on with the video. In the last chapter of Age of Empire, Turin tells Persephone, I see a baby, a descendant of yours, crying in the dark, born on a cold night in a despicable city very near here. His parents have been murdered, and he is forgotten and ignored. The woman who takes him from his dead mother's arms will abandon him in a gutter less than a week after he takes his first breath. He has no chance of survival and the fate of the world rests with him. I'm going to make you a promise, he leaned in and whispered, as if he feared someone might be listening. I swear I'll be there on that cold night when he cries alone in the gutter. He squeezed her hand, and she knew that this was meant as a covenant, a solemn vow he wasn't making lightly. When the world turns its back, I'll pick him up and deliver him to safety, and I'll watch over that child when he faces the most difficult challenges. 3,000 years later, in the city of Radibor, Turin makes his first appearance to fulfill his promise. He rescues a newborn baby Royce, who is discarded in a gutter by Mrs. Gaunt, Deegan and Miranda's future mother, who was the midwife for Royce's parents on the night they were murdered. Turin would take him to an orphanage where Royce would be able to survive. Turin would then make his way down to Calais to find a Tenkin woman named Ilya, who is Gwen's mother. Later in the Crown Tower novel, Gwen would think back to her mother and wonder, Why did we leave Calais? Why did you give me a northern name? And most importantly, why does it mean so much to you for us to go to this mythical place called Medford? Stubbornly, her mother had refused to answer except to say that God had told her to go. When Gwen asked which God, her mother had replied, the one who walks as a man. Many years later, Turin would travel to a small town north of Vernes. Gwen and Ilya had been traveling to Medford, and Ilya had just died. Turin appears to Gwen and gives her six gold coins, one to bury her mother, one to travel to Medford, and four more to save. He tells her, A desperate man will come to you in Medford. He will come at night, dressed in his own blood and begging for help. You must be there. You must save him. Around this same time, Royce, who is now older, has just been sent to the Man's Ant salt mines. Torin would go there and pose as an inmate named Nim. Royce recalls, Then I met him. I would have died my first month if I hadn't. He kept me alive. He had absolutely no reason, no reason at all, but he did. He taught me things. How to survive in the mine, where to dig and where not to, when to sleep and when to pretend to. He taught me some mathematics, reading, history, and even a bit of Elvish. He never once asked for anything in return. When Arcadius came to free Royce, Torin would give Royce Alverstone, a dagger created by Torin, and told Royce not to kill Arcadius. Royce would come back later and try to free Nim, but Nim would supposedly be dead. 
From this point on, until Turin shows up as an actual character in the form of Nimbus, Turin stays mainly under the radar. We do begin to hear about the legend of Kyle from multiple characters though. This legend tells the story of how the father of the gods, Erebus, hurt his daughter Muriel. In order to gain her forgiveness, he begins to walk the earth as a mortal. When he did good deeds, Muriel would send him a feather as a small sign of forgiveness. This story is, of course, an altered version of the true story of Turin and Muriel. As an added Easter egg, Amelia has just finished telling the story to Empress Modena in Rise of Empire when she thinks, This really was one of Amelia's favorite stories, and she told it hoping for miraculous results. Perhaps the father of the gods would hear her and come to her aid. Amelia waited. Nothing happened. The very next day, though, Nimbus would show up in the Palace of Aquesta. From here on out, Nimbus would be a mainstay character for the rest of the series. Then it's settled. You are officially the... Imperial tutor to her eminence, the Empress Modena, Nimbus supplied. Turan goes on to help Amelia, Empress Modena, and Hadrian many times throughout the rest of the story. The series ends with the final words. Royce turned to see Nimbus standing still, his head bent back, his eyes looking up. A white feather drifted downward. It swirled, blowing on a gentle breeze, until it was close enough that the tall, spindly man in the white powdered wig reached up and caught it between his fingers. He kissed it gently, then slipped it into his leather pouch. He pulled the bag clothes and continued on his way, whistling a merry tune until he passed behind a hill and was gone. We do have one other bonus appearance by Turin in the series. This one may just be speculative though, and takes place before Royce was even born. Arcadius was born the son of a poor weaver. As he grew up, he would disappear for ten years, in which time he would presumably find the tomb of Yorick and learn a way to find the true heir of Navron. While Yorick is secretly one of the Aesira, he is not Turin. But it is speculated that Turin is the one who set Arcadius on the path to find Yorick. Perhaps we will find out if this speculation is true in future books. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Be sure to subscribe and watch my other videos to learn more about the world of Elan and Rhaeyra. Thanks!